Good. Okay, I'd like to call the Corporation of County Bruce Corporate Services Committee Finance and Property Division to order and ask anybody to declare pecuniary interest either now or for rises down the agenda. First up, action items. A, the presentation of 2016 business plans. And I think at this point I'll just turn it over to Kelly for a brief description of today's items. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Through you, uh, what's presented to committee this morning will be a, a series of the, uh, I'll call it the revised modified 2016 business plans following uh, council's um, instruction to just maybe modify them a little bit, make them a little bit uh, more streamlined. I thought it was also worthwhile at this stage to go through uh, at a fairly high level where we have been in terms of our the um, last number of years and I'm going to try to uh, replicate my colleague uh, the county engineer and I have a this little clicker with a red thing that mm -hmm. and I did test it on or with him this morning yeah, and him, it, yeah. it's working well yeah. so um, so without any further ado I'll just uh, like I said quickly go through some things so the What's before you today, uh, what you're going to be going through are uh, a series of uh, annual business plans. They still include the key performance indicators, but where you'll see differences is uh, we've really fine-tuned it in terms of uh, descriptions for the projects, including the connection to the uh, program budgeting and the pressure categories. In September of 2013, Council approved uh, the strategic plan and, and which included the, the vision. And I'll just read into the public domain, the bold and beautiful Bruce County, a healthy, caring community of prosperity and innovation. And uh, in considering that, we have 90 uh, special projects that are on the, the uh, I'll call it the docket for 2016. And uh, that's impressive in and of itself. The, the um, value, excuse me, the value in terms of w what work a, a is being done. When you look at the strategic plan, we, we talk a lot about, uh, as part of our core values, that we are a, a progressive and, and knowledgeable community, that we're efficient and coordinated in our governance and ultimately that we are well-connected, mobile, and proud and vibrant. All of those things uh, allow us to deliver and support a high quality of life for residents and ideally uh, that we'll have a, an innovation center in the area of economic development in the near future. In uh, 2014, the uh, council approved the operational review, and since that time, um, all of the directors and the you'll as you look around the room, there's a, a number of key individuals that are are here today by way of invitation, because they've really um, played a vital, vital role in getting us to where we are today, and uh, they will play a critical role in advancing the, the business plans. So what are those? Uh, in, uh, on a high level, of course, we have the 150th celebration that uh, we're busy, uh, that we've just started to do some planning with the HR group in terms of modernizing the workflows, the policies, uh, completing a market study in terms of where we where we measure up as an employer on the corporate side the advancement of corporate forecasting the IT strategic plan and of course uh, what everyone loves to work with our procurement policy that uh, was a bit of humor there so okay um, moving on uh, the planning and development team uh, have had a, a couple of years of a very serious change which we needed to do to be able to get us where we are now in terms of advancing our, our economic development strategy. And highways, uh, you'll see they have a, a series of initiatives on, in their plan in terms of uh, looking at the full structure of their department, uh, starting to uh, develop five-year uh, plans in terms of road maintenance, uh, bridge uh, consolidation 
uh, among others. The social services and housing are similar in, in some regards with the planning department in that w we have been challenged, uh, rightly so, but so, by the province to uh, start to develop service hubs across across the county. Uh, we have been doing that, but we're, we're going to ramp up, up the game, which uh, the director will go through when uh, she goes through her plan. In addition to that, of course, there's children's services the final implementation for the 10-year um, housing strategy and our uh, progression of business cases uh, in the area of capital um, rehabilitation for affordable housing. Paramedic services, as everyone knows, uh, we are in the starting uh, stages of the joint services review with our neighboring county of Gray County. On top of that, when you, when you see their plan, they uh, are going to be advancing the community paramedicine project as well, and of course, uh, acquiring some new ambulances. Long-term care have uh, a, quite an aggressive uh, series of projects in their plans, including the implementation of a, an advanced nurse call system, which we're pretty confident is going to have a, a absolute um, positive impact on how we deliver our service. The museum and, and library, uh, those two departments have an, a number of initiatives underway. The museum, of course, is advancing the, the traveling exhibits. Uh, they've just um, received the, the, and committee has received the draft um, ARC plan. The uh, library has had a year of uh, absolute terrific uh, program advancing and that's going to, to continue. Given all that, I thought it would be worthwhile to go through um, the, the, the elements when you're going, when an organization is going through the amount of, of change that we've gone through. Um, I thought it was worthwhile to kind of highlight for, for committee. Sorry, Paul, I'll try not to hit you with this. Wish you were a little bit closer, Mr. <laughs> County Engineer. Just, yeah, I could get you to push it. So where we started in 2013, I'm really not shaking, it's just mm -hmm. the unit, uh, was down here. So we were in a, as an organization, in a period of, um, relative stability, uh, a lot of individuals in the organization fully, un oh, that's cool. Is that you doing that? Oh, awesome, okay. So we were in, in a period of relative stability, but uh, everyone knew that we ne needed to do a strategic plan and you wanted a, an operational review completed, which meant that we started to go up the, the um, the, the hill a little bit in terms of change. So the first f series of months during that change uh, had it, the, the necessary elements to it. And now we're in a point where for many staff, uh, it feels somewhat chaotic. It feels a little bit um, lopsided perhaps because there's so much that has evolved in the last three years, it's difficult to kind of keep it all straight in one's mind and it gets a little bit jumbled up. So we're now at the stage of going through replicating and improving and in the next 12 months we're going to jump into the stabilizing point. So everyone will feel com comfortable, will feel confident, they've uh, now will have two years under their belt with the annual business plans and um, it, it'll be a, a relative period of calmness. And then we will start again, and we'll, go, we'll start into the next phase of, of um, enhancing and modernizing our processes. So for example, uh, when uh, the director of HR delivers her report, she's going to talk about uh, various processes and, and policies that need to be reviewed. So inevitably when you start going through that and it touches people and it touches their daily world, it, it feels a little uncomfortable. I also thought it would be worthwhile to, uh, if you wouldn't mind Diane going down one more page, to revisit the, the change uh, elements. Because uh, 
shockingly, uh, everything in our organization that we've gone through in the, the last three years, we've been totally normal. It doesn't feel nice, but we're normal. Uh, we're special, but we're also very normal. And uh, just going, starting at the bottom, when we first uh, started our, our um, series of, of elements, in particular the, the um, work groups that uh, supported the operational review, it felt with many staff that it was almost we were uh, starting and stopping, starting and stopping, and, and a bit lopsided and, and um, choppy, for lack of a better uh, word. From there, then we started, once the operational review uh, was received and we had some action plans, we, we then, as an organization, moved into the next stage where it felt, for many of us, that we uh, were really having difficulties in terms of getting the right resources in place to get done what we needed to, to get done. What that then caused was a general sense of people struggling to appreciate the benefits of what the heck we were doing. Even though I wanted to use a different word, I used the right one. So there was a, a real um, feeling of almost disconnectedness to, to why were we doing this. It, it was really hard for um, many in the organization to appreciate the, the benefits of, of the initiatives. From there, we're now up into, and we're kind of bouncing back and forth between the, the second and third one. So there's a, a number who uh, we've we invested in terms of skills development. The, the loyalist is one example of many, our biggest example. And so we're investing in the skills, but until you start to test them and put them into play, it's, it's hard to have confidence that you have, in fact, developed the skill, which uh, inevitably creates a sense of fear, a uh, high level of anxiety. And uh, so we have a, 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 that's still present, and we bounce between that and uh, a general hopefully not to cause you to feel uncomfortable with what we've been doing, but it does uh, result in a, a bit of a sense of confusion because with the, the um, gaining of confidence in one's skills, you always look for what, what's our vision, where are we going, what's the path. And if I were to critique um, my role in what, what we've done for the last three years, I think I've been a little bit... Um, um, I could do a little bit more in terms of reestablishing, restating what the vision is, which is what we'll be uh, focused on in 2016. So we're in a great place. In the, the next year, we will uh, get to the, the top of the chart, as they say, in that everyone uh, is going to be uh, feeling positive and will uh, be in a, a moment of uh, great stability and uh, I would venture to say uh, almost happiness. <laughs> I can answer any questions if you wish, Mr. Warden. Sure. Any questions from committee? Anne? I, I was just going to comment to our CAO that I really like the change chart. You know, it's, it's what we kind of all know, but I like the way you, you put it down and and the, if you leave out a, a chunk or you're having trouble getting uh, one box coming together, how it affects the whole, whole thing and your end result. So um, that, that's, very, that's very helpful for anything to do with change, which is, like you said, hard to implement. You have to be patient. <laughs> Any other comments? Hearing none, we will move on to the KPIs. Uh, through you, Mr. Warden. So the, um, each department head will be going through their prospective uh, business plans. And as I stated in the prior report, we have uh, 
of 90 major initiatives and projects. And uh, the directors and the, the managers that are, are present and, and some that couldn't be here for uh, competing reasons deserve an awful uh, lot of credit to, uh, that they've uh, gotten us to where we, we are today. For the, the CAO's office, the um, key performance indicators were continuing to trend favorably in the area of our um, operating cost of governance. Uh, we've seen a, a slight reduction and that will be in a, a place of stability. So basically, across the organization, all costs rolled up. Um, the uh, cost of governance, which is um, pretty, uh, I'll call it meager, at 1.6%. Uh, it's always helpful to measure the service departments because inevitably the, those groups provide uh, work to uh, all 750 employees. And again, there was a, a slight drop at the end of 2015 of 306 and for 2016, we will be back at a full complement of 32.6. The uh, number of annual projects delivered on time and on budget for 2015, uh, it uh, looks like it's when we get the numbers uh, completely finalized, will be at around 80%. Our goal was 85% uh, in uh, a series of conflicting needs um, it basically created an environment where we were unable to get the projects complete and uh, most of them will be done in the first quarter of 2016. And finally, the, uh, the number of organization goals uh, with innovation and cost containment I, I'm actually going to go back through this again. And um, the last measurement, we were at 25 for 2016. I want to uh, uh, restudy that because I think it's probably uh, uh, potentially a little conservative given the, the 90 projects that we have on, in play for 2016. It, for the year of 2015, we uh, completed um, all of the, the goals in that area that we had projected to. Just carry on. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, the major projects. I'm going to go into the the next. Yeah. Uh, we have the 150th uh, year anniversary celebration, and I do hope everyone that got the message yesterday about our our starting point of uh, of a theme appreciated the humor that was was shared. Um, the group uh, have now met uh, the one time as, as a full group and they will break into various committees to, to do their final uh, push to, in terms of getting the, the program uh, completely defined. Uh, it will be very exciting for us in 2017, no doubt about it. Uh, a number, project number two uh, for the CAO's office is the organizational review in terms of HR and finance policies and procedures, which I won't go through uh, in a great deal more um, uh, detail based on my prior comments, but it is an area where we, we will have a, a, a significant amount of, of work to be done in, in how we physically do those updates, we're at the preliminary stage, but it is a, a reality. And it's important for our, um, our staff as a whole that a, a number of our policies become um, modernized. The uh, program budgeting and, and the operational stability that will be required will be the, um, the third major project. The initiative has been a massive undertaking and uh, again credit is deserved by everybody around around the room and in particular the the finance and treasury team the the next year we're going to be really spending a great deal of time in terms of stabilizing and starting to to ask the questions about what exactly is this telling us what why is um 
maintain of service uh, our biggest pressure category and why under economic development or excuse me under growth is it um, basically zero so those sorts of things is is where we get the the true value of program budgeting and uh, in the area of uh, capital plans uh, for the CAO's office, there's only the one project that's connected to the 150th anniversary. And given we're in the preliminary stages of planning, this is uh, really a very rough estimate of uh, what we may in fact see once the, the team get done their, their planning. Good. Any questions for Kelly? Okay, we will move on to Betty Ann. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, this um, annual business plan, uh, as we've recreated it, uh, does take a little bit of a different uh, look, um, particularly uh, as we consolidated our major initiatives and looked at, revisited our key performance indicators and uh, just to ensure that we were, in fact, providing uh, good KPIs that we would be able to measure uh, once we moved forward uh, with other um, like industries and municipalities. So for the... Um, the, uh, the legislative and the finance side, uh, not, not any changes. The insurance claims, we look at that as a KPI. It is um, somewhat uh, related to our risk, uh, risk management that we'll talk about a little bit later in the, in the annual business plan. But this refers to our, our claim where we have a $25,000 deductible. And uh, we have uh, contained those, uh, but sometimes um, uh, certainly the, the due diligence, and these are particularly uh, within our, uh, our transportation system. So the, you can, it reflects the, the due diligence within that department and, and also with our health and safety um, initiatives that uh, we are able to contain that. Uh, the average number of invoices processed weekly, uh, we look at that as a, we are a service uh, department, so the, the number of invoices, how we process them uh, is certainly changing as we move to electronic funds transfers, and uh, uh, that's been uh, very welcomed by our vendors as well. Uh, the date budget is presented to council. Uh, this has been an initiative that we've tried to move over. Um, there's a couple of us in the room uh, that will remember when municipal <coughs> councils um, passed their budgets in November, uh, which, which we did, but it was the November of the current year that you were passing it for. So hence you were pretty, um, pretty sure that you could be on target uh, by the end of the year and your surplus and deficit was looking pretty good. So we've been able to move that forward uh, significantly uh, where there isn't uh, in an election year. We delayed it uh, into January, so we only had the one month delay, which was required by legislation. And as we look forward into our projections that our intent would be for the 2017 budget would be um, uh, approved by December of 2016 this year, uh, if, not, if not earlier. And, and while it doesn't identify it in this annual business plan, certainly our intention is to start looking at um, multi-year um, operational um, uh, budgets and capital budgets so that uh, we can continue to move forward uh, more effectively and efficiently. Uh, we, we do uh, track our freedom of information uh, requests and again, very minimal requests and I, I would uh, credit this to the um, the skill set at uh, in each of the departments and how we have delivered the program and the training and the uh, the procedures that we have in place because staff know uh, what they can and and can't um, release and. So the only requ requests that we end up getting in the clerk's department are those that are usually of an unusual nature. So uh, very minimal activity in that respect. The goods and services, uh, the percentages uh, purchased through the procurement process, and this is any purchases over $4,000, excluding our social housing portfolio, although our purchasing staff uh, do work very closely with social housing. Uh, the one 
um, sort of missing piece uh, to that puzzle is as we move forward with the procurement policy and procedure and to amalgamate those two that are still uh, still stand separately that we have one corporate uh, document so as you can see from the projections and from the the changes we have had great success in in that area uh, as the in the CAO's uh, opening remarks we talked about how we um, are improving our skill set and how we've identified it and uh, last week we celebrated a number of um, graduates from the loyalist program and our department has um, benefited from uh, four attending in uh, 2015 and uh, and then there is an additional four um, and in fact the one cohort started today and that's why uh, some of our uh, senior management staff uh, weren't able to join us this morning so a very worthwhile program and um, certainly uh, we, as we as we move forward to the full extent of that program as you can see nothing projected in 2017 and 18 um, and and that's just defining what what the program moving forward uh, in its um, in its present um, format uh, the total uh, website visits the the next four are IT related and you'll see those are, are different um, you may recall from what we had done previously but we wanted to uh, step back and take a look at at what it is that we deliver and get down to the sort of the grassroots of what IT is is all about and it's certainly about customer service uh, no question about it but we wanted to identify as to the volume of uh, that the IT staff are dealing with on a regular basis and the total website visits which is all our websites um, uh, including the the main county of Bruce certainly explore the Bruce uh, and our museum library so over three million uh, website uh, visits and interestingly had an opportunity to look at some other like upper tiers and uh, uh, it, it's interesting how we f how we fall in and, and uh, I, I think our, our website visits are certainly greater than than uh, many of our other um, uh, like municipalities uh, the help desk support ticket so if your computer doesn't start uh, uh, you you have any issues and whether it's dealing with uh, phones computers um, um, many other issues uh, they are logged as a help desk support ticket and these are the tickets that are logged and my fellow colleagues know that we continue to encourage that sometimes it's easy to just pick up the phone or to send an email but this helps us to log it and helps us to support the uh, other departments so that um, we're making sure that we're making good use of our time and that we're supporting so so uh, uh, help desk support tickets uh, annually is over 3,000 email messages I thought this was uh, interesting to track because we know um, email is uh, certainly a major way that we communicate so this is outgoing and received uh, so uh, in an average uh, per day is uh, 10,000 emails would be received and outgoing and our email accounts that we host so almost uh, a thousand email accounts that are hosted uh, within the corporation and then those would um, generate uh, the 10,000 email messages in and out per day so moving on to our uh, initiatives we have seven and they are uh, described here in the uh, the opening uh, with the operation and capital uh, portions of them and uh, just to provide some additional description of what those initiatives are the one is still um, uh, ongoing from our operational review recommendation number 15 and how we are exploring options and to improve our efficiency so develop a revised capital forecast template and initiate the review of multi-year operating uh, budgets so that will take um, staff time and uh, I was um, pleased that staff were invited to, to join and hear that message to, to hear the messages today so that they uh, they know how they'll be involved and, and the owner is certainly uh, myself and the senior management team will all play a part in that and uh, certainly the the deputy treasurer and the finance staff so we are excited about that uh, and how we can move forward as you know the 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 program budget uh, template the new model that was introduced was uh, staff driven last year uh, we have some very talented staff within the finance department uh, and we use the Excel um, software uh, we will be looking at uh, options to move forward with that or there are some other uh, already built options that we've been 
been uh, monitoring how they've been moving uh, forward and uh, we may be looking at utilizing some of the funds that we've set aside in reserves in the past to be able to move forward but at this time we're just looking at staff staff time we are looking forward to responding to the uh, cross-functional working team that again was the operational review recommendation 18 and 19 and the cross-functional team was established uh, for procurement and uh, as I said we're looking forward to uh, reacting to those adjustments and then incorporate the necessary standards and procedures that will allow us to move forward. With that is also looking at um, commitment accounting. Uh, whether it's in all aspects or just within the capital to assist us with um, mid-year forecasting, uh, purchase order system uh, for capital projects, um, but certainly uh, the review of those procedures and, and to, ha to have a, a collaborative purchasing process that um, meets the needs of all of the departments. And again, the uh, staff time that will be absorbed with that. Uh, item three, uh, Committee has uh, heard previously about this initiative and uh, it is a service initiative when we look at our, our pressure categories. Uh, the first two were, uh, the first one um, was uh, of course a, a council priority as we moved forward with um, our, our uh, developing the, the multi-year template with the asset management plan. The second was uh, just to maintain our services and the third uh, is um, as to regarding a service initiative and that's around our risk management strategy uh, corporately and across the the county administration and uh, that was operational review recommendation number uh, 22 and you'll recall that um, that was uh, introducing a new position into the corporation and uh, we we withdrew that as a, an early start date so that we could study that uh, throughout 2016 with a potential of bringing that position on board in September 1st uh, once we have studied it and determined uh, exactly the, the need and where that need lies. Uh, the next uh, three items are related to, uh, actually four items, are all maintaining services. And the first is the BMA Management Consulting Municipal Study, and we will be um, moving forward with that um, right away. Uh, it is included in the, the budget, and that's to allow us to, um, to explore how we uh, compare uh, with other financial uh, indicators and other um, with the, a municipal study. So that is a, a cost uh, expected to be approximately $5,500 and then the staff time involved and that's going to um, involve all senior man the entire senior management team. The electronics record management uh, we hear an awful lot about that and uh, it sounds like it might be just one simple um, solution but it is going to involve um, certainly the the entire uh, management team but uh, led by um, particularly the manager of IT and uh, our deputy clerk as we explore alternate options uh, for our electronics ma records management program and also seek to look at our, our uh, e-agenda solution which again is a um, uh, made in Bruce County solution uh, but we do want to to look at that and see if there are other opportunities but um, uh, it it will uh, change the, the method, uh, many of our, our ways that we operate and introduce um, SharePoint uh, opportunities and those will be brought forward um, uh, in the near future for, for committee's consideration as we move forward. And again, at this point, uh, the staff time absorbed. The Information Technology Services Strategic Plan, you will recall that uh, Council did adopt a, a uh, Made in Bruce County plan in November 2014. Uh, we we're taking the opportunity to review that strategic plan and to uh, bring forward a, an updated strategic plan, uh, particularly as it relates to the delivery of the core IT services and how we can uh, move forward to uh, support the, the, uh, the county and the, the department. So, the uh, staff time involved in that and looking at a Q3. Unified communications uh, telephony. Uh, we want to develop and implement a, a unified communication strategy. We know that many of our uh, systems throughout the county are uh, aging and uh, we want to be um, 
as proactive as we can. Uh, the first initiative was uh, with Gateway Haven and our, our nurse call system, but also how we develop the phone system uh, there as well. So we will be looking at a, an integrated solution uh, across the board, and uh, funds have been established, um, set aside for that, for that project. And that is the operational involvement. So there are three projects that have a capital component, uh, the electronics records uh, management, and you can see that uh, significant funds have been uh, set aside in reserves, uh, particularly for that, that project, and as it would be a, a, a multi-year uh, implementation. Uh, the, under information uh, technology, the strategic plan, uh, how we deliver the, the core services, again, uh, capital expenditures that are included in there, and uh, also, uh, in addition, that is the 2016 unspent costs, uh, unspent uh, funds in 2015 that would be brought forward um, that are currently, those initiatives are underway to move forward with, with the uh, changing of uh, a number of our switches and uh, servers to be able to uh, provide a, um, a better uh, service. And the capital component of the unified uh, communications uh, included in the 2016 uh, budget of $125,000. Did highlight a couple of projects that are on our radar for 2017, the continuation of the multi-year operating budget and uh, also evaluating the uh, bring your own device uh, to eliminate duplication of service and uh, offer an alternative to our, to our staff uh, who may not, uh, uh, may have other ideas of what they would prefer to use and uh, that they would be able to, uh, to look at those alternatives. And finally, just the, uh, the definitions of the key performance indicators that we provide. Good. Thank you, Betty Ann. Any questions or comments? Milt? Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, Betty Ann, on the website visits, uh, a further <laughs> breakdown of those, like, as you say, Explore the Bruce and Library. And that. I would be happy to provide that for you as a, an information report yeah. at the next yeah, meeting. Good. Thank you. Anne? <clears throat> I was just interested in the uh, multi-year operating budgets. Um, I, j just the con the concept and and the advantages. I know we all you usually have multi-year projections and you have your high priority lists and your next priorities that if you can get to them or you you put them on your list. So just how would this multi-year operating budget just generally just a mm -hmm top level view um, change things? Right. Well, in the past, um, the legislation has changed over and in the last number of years to allow us to actually adopt our budget in advance for multi-years operation. What it does is give the staff more stability and council the stability and I suppose our, our, <coughs> our public in knowing what our, our intentions are as to how we would move forward. So it allows us to, to plan well in advance and knowing that those approvals are already in place. It's certainly we have moved leaps and bounds by, by just adopting our budget uh, prior to the to the year beginning, but um, the operational budget will I, it just it provides I think what I would offer is the stability. So it doesn't mean that you can't revisit that budget, and and we would revisit it, but it would just we would establish the, the trends and the expectations for um, multi years in operations. We do uh, have in the past have done capital forecasts, but that's really all they are is their capital forecast. So staff can be planning. And then if the, the fork in the road takes the other, uh, the other direction, uh, because there's been no approvals, then uh, much of that planning can be, uh, I mean, it's time well spent, but it, if, if you don't have that direction, you may not be going down the right, right path. So. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, hearing none, we will move on. Thank you, Betty Ann. Move on to HR. Marianne? All right. Uh, Mr. Warden, just before the HR business plan uh, it starts, I would like to point out uh, what staff are meaning by the term uh, staff time absorbed. It's the investment of our existing resources in executing the project. Uh, so that that's a new a new measurement for us because quite often our um, 
our staff do a terrific amount of work and we don't always uh, put a, a dollar value about the amount of time it takes them to get something uh, done, what we're investing in the project. Okay, thank you. Okay, Marianne. Good morning. I'm pleased to have with me uh, two of the HR supervisors, uh, Joanne and Joan. Unfortunately, our health and safety manager wasn't able to join us this morning because he's in his first loyalist training. Um, so uh, thank you very much for being here today. Um, our key performance indicators are the same key performance indicators from last year, so there's been no major change. I think the notable one to talk about is the headcount report. Um, you would think that counting one person would equal one person, and it would be pretty straightforward. Um, but counting headcount actually is a uh, fairly uh, large challenge for us. And the reason for that is we have uh, um, half of our complement is part-time staff. And of that half of the complement, um, not all of that staff, in, in fact very few, have set schedules. So um, they're really taken and filled in as needed. And uh, so it's a matter of figuring out how many of those individuals we need for the number of hours that are budgeted for. And so it's become uh, quite a challenge. So we've created a new headcount report um, that we started back in January and February of 2015. And we have now honed that uh, report in uh, October, November, and December to actually come up with a number. And part of what we're doing in that particular report to keep things stable is we're now capturing for the first time ever our vacancies. And so when the position is not filled, we're still holding it on the books so that we're not going to see those drastic numbers change from year to year. So you're not seeing 715 employees one year, 750 the next, and council's kind of wondering, we didn't give authorization to hire X number of people. How did that number jump? And because it's always a snapshot, we're trying to stabilize that number and really know how many people we need to operate here at the county. So we're really proud of that report. And that's a report that's now generated on a monthly basis uh, for all managers. And uh, they got their first delivery of that in January of this year. Um, so we were really pleased to see that go forward. Um, so in 2016, we've recorded that we have eight uh, major initiatives, but I think it's also notable that there are quite a few more than that, and we'll probably end up updating this report as we go through. Um, so one of the, the um, ideas, one of the plans, for ex example, is job evaluation. We're currently in the catch-up of job evaluation, uh, getting prepared to launch our major initiative 2016. So a lot of time and effort has been spent by the job evaluation committee uh, since October um, until to date. We actually have meetings again this week, uh, getting caught up on those. So it's a fairly large initiative that's not even captured on this business plan. Another good example of initiative that's not captured here is our e-recruitment, uh, because what we're doing is we're taking our Avante software and we're now launching and going live with the HR modules. And e-recruitment is an example of one of those first live modules that we're going forward with. So to give you an idea of the scope of that, we have 65 hiring managers at the county. So in the next month, we're going to be training 65 hiring managers on how to do e-recruitment. So that's easily going to take us four to six weeks to get all of those individuals trained. Um, so these are things that are working in the background. The HR department is very transactional. It's very busy. And so I just wanted to highlight that on behalf of the team as well as the initiatives that we're looking at. Um, so the Loyalist Leadership Program, uh, we have had four graduates, uh, which we're thrilled about, and we have uh, three more individuals in the HR team uh, going through in uh, 2016, and uh, Joan is uh, midway through her uh, program that started last year. Uh, corporate succession plan that was started last year and that's still in development along with performance management, and so we're con continuing to be creative in how we're moving forward with that. Uh, the performance appraisal system, we did uh, do a beta launch in two groups on a new performance management. And then we ended up putting that on hold because Avante is doing some major upgrades within the software that they're going to launch hopefully in the, in the spring. Uh, so we're getting prepared for that launch so we can continue along on that project as well. 
Uh, corporate training and professional development, uh, we are in the midst of doing a training matrix. So it's really the first time that, that the uh, county has really reached out and tried to capture what we're training people in. So again, it's a lot of catch up and a lot of old data that we're trying to get caught up with it. And we're also launching out to all the staff our HR downloads module. Another initiative that's not on here, but that also is working on the background is we have now um, contracted with Harvard training so that we're going to be doing uh, an additional online training modules that are going to support the loyalist training. Um, so uh, we're looking at launching that in April and we're excited, very excited about that plan as well. Um, the five-year HR strategic plan uh, has been proposed and is uh, in the midst of being formalized and that should be coming to us shortly. Um, the realignment of the management and paramedic services and long-term care, um, as we, the CAO has already spoken to, is uh, underway. And then, of course, we're looking at a lot of uh, legislative compliance. And one of the key roles, uh, projects there is job evaluation that we're going to be looking at, along with pay equity and uh, coming to council to do a market review as well. Uh, we're continuing to look at legislation as it applies to health and safety, and so we're in the midst of doing a mock work well audit, and that's 50% um, completed at this time, and um, we're getting the results back on that, and that, that will be lodged um, out and the initiatives that are related to that. And uh, then we have our performance indicators. Good, thank you. Any questions for Miriam? Nope. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warren. The uh, number six there, the realignment of the uh, management paramedic service to health long-term care, is that, that is on hold, right, until we determine what's going on with the other investigation we're doing? Uh, through you, Mr. Mr. Warden, yes. While the joint services review that there's no activity occurring with this initiative. <coughs> So that initiative may not proceed? Other comments or questions? Hearing none, thank you. Great, thank you. Chris. Um, I'd like to begin by uh, our presentation is broken into two parts and the first is going to deal with both um, economic development and corporate policy and I'll give you a bit of a rundown on the land use planning side in terms of uh, some of our major initiatives for 2016 and where we're going to head um, with that. Um, on the first page before you was some of the KPIs that we had developed um, in and around corporate policy and economic development. Um, some of the, um, starting from the very top, um, you can see some of these related specifically to the corporate policy stuff. And uh, we've been sort of getting our feet wet with this. We are successful in hiring a new staff member, um, being Brad Noble, into the uh, corporate policy division um, a number of months ago. And, uh, and I'll, when I get into some more details, I'll give you some ideas, some of the projects that they're working on. But basically, the division was started up in order to provide support for those broader projects that cover off uh, not just single departments, but broader corporate uh, type initiatives that were identified within the with strategic plan and operational review. Um, the only major things we should look for in terms of the bottom of this, in terms of some of the, uh, the, the normal pr uh, programming that we did, Spruce the Bruce uh, grants were down a bit this year just because we had some issues getting um, those out the door and marketing to the community groups, but we hope to have a uh, full staff contingent back in place for 2016 to, to ramp that program up a bit. Um, you can see we're up a bit from, we normally project around $85,000, we brought in a bit more. Um, this year and that money typically goes back into the forestry reserve that goes to support uh, capital and so on for the forestry uh, program. 
Um, very successful tra trail program um, this year. Uh, we ran the uh, uh, a job creation program um, that was undertaking trail work in both the Lindsay Tract and also the Brant Tract as well, which resulted in the construction of some more trails and maintenance of trails um, this year as well. Um, in terms of the summary of the projects, um, we talked about the development of the Bruce Lens, and that's related also to number two, which is the Bruce brand. Um, support for corporate uh, project management, and I can tell you a bit about that as we get into the details. Um, updating the 911 manual. Um, also undertaking a review, as you're aware, of uh, economic development. We've done a lot of work in terms of the structure, roles and functions and so on. But certainly some future meetings around the overall strategy and the work program um, for uh, 2016, given the resources that we have um, in the budget for 2016. As everybody is aware, we're also looking at incorporating the, uh, the Bruce uh, uh, Business Enterprise Centre um, at the county level and works are currently underway to have it up and running by um, April. And additionally, some work in forestry in terms of getting certification uh, for uh, 2016. So we mentioned uh, the Bruce Lens, and this has been an exciting project. Um, still, uh, a lot of people don't know what that what the Bruce Lens is, and and so because of that, um, under goal number one and two, uh, we've been working with the interdepartmental working group on branding and imaging to look at some of these things. And those um, the members of that uh, working group have been out um, interviewing people, collecting data trying to find out what that internal voice is, how do people in Bruce County define themselves, what is that essential image of ourselves, and also that external view, how do people outside view us. And uh, there was uh, some consulting work done that was returned back to County Council um, a number of weeks back. And uh, the goal then um, in 2016 is to take that baseline information and start forming that into the corporate brand, the corporate look and feel. And this will be um, an image that crosses um, print material, um, web material, how we interact with the public, how we interact with external agencies, and so on and so forth. Um, so this project is, is on schedule, it's uh, ongoing, and you'll see more of the actual products start to drop out of that project under goal number one and goal number two in 2016. Um, in the operational review, and this is goal number three, there was a lot of talk, well, both in, from a strategic perspective and also an operational perspective, the need for a common project management platform. And all the different departments are at different levels in terms of how projects are managed. And, uh, but at the same time, we're trying to encourage our managers to let managers manage and be provided with authority and responsibility under that. Um, so there's a lack of overall flow through on, on those broader objectives in the corporation because we're not on a shared platform. And so um, we've already been working in conjunction with the IT department and other departments to look at some of this um, in terms of software such as SharePoint, um, also investigating Microsoft uh, project management um, as well as, as potential tools. So we're investigating these right now and hope to pilot some of these methodologies in 2016. Um, um, to uh, help move forward with some of those broader objectives within the, the county strategy. Um, I mentioned uh, the 911, just simply doing a bit of work with our partners just to make sure that um, policies and procedures that we currently have are still robust. Um, as you know, uh, we, have, um, uh, we will have a high rate of retirement um, within the county in terms of the baby boomers get a bit older. And so it's important from our, our department that we have standard operating procedures in place around 911 in terms of who does what to allow for su succession of that program um, to the next uh, generation who's going to be taking that over. So we'll be doing some, some work in and around that um, with GIS and also our existing uh, 911 technician. Um, a lot of discussion last year and even into the previous years around economic development and uh, there's been a number of reports that have gone to uh, the committee that outline uh, roles and strategies, who does what and so on and so forth. And then um, coming into budget, of course, um, looking at uh, the challenges of, of budgeting with the body count in terms of the total number of people. And because of that, um, within our work program, we had to make some, some choices in terms of what direction we need to go uh, with regard to economic development. And this is because we're, we're actively about to launch the actual work plan uh, for 2016. 
but there's a feeling I think at, at council level uh, that we need to sort of check back in um, in terms of to review that program make sure we're all going in the same direction and given that we don't have the full slate of resources provided to run the full business function that that needs to be reviewed with council in terms of where those priorities are we've had some discussions at the staff level and also at the council le council level in terms of a strategy for economic development and I would argue that we can bring together all those documents that we've done so far over the last year and a half they include all the elements of the strategy and so we hope to summarize those into a document um, uh, for council um, so we have something that we can all share and celebrate uh, both uh, from elected officials and staff in terms of where this is heading because currently it's spread out through a number of different research reports and documents there is an upcoming meeting um, with council and we're going to have a facilitated discussion in and around this idea for council to enunciate some of the, what they believe to be the basic principles and priorities around economic development and to allow staff to share the work that is done uh, check back in and make sure uh, we're all aligned as we launch the 2016 um, uh, objectives for the program uh, I mentioned BEC um, we're currently in uh, discussions with um, the province in terms of the transfer of the agreements and so far we seem to be on on target um, for the transfer date I mentioned uh, forestry stewardship um, there's a number of um, woodlot owners particularly the larger ones such as Bruce County who are trying to get federal um, certification you'll notice when you go to many stores um, where they sell lumber and so on there is a stamp certification on stamp on the uh, on the lumber and this is the idea that it's coming from a source where the lands are properly managed um, where ecosystem values are taken into account and so on and so forth and within the county we do have a, a management plan and an operation plan that meets those principles and objectives but it seems to be that long term um, there's going to be a better market for uh, lumber that is, is certified and so we're currently working with the Eastern Ontario Forest Alliance who is a certified trainer our certified evaluator on behalf of the feds and uh, so we've been working on a 2016 to uh, to achieve certification um, we have a number of um, people who are asking us now when they're bidding on the product whether or not we're certified we've been very lucky that we have a number of small sawmills that are close to our market and uh, so our prices have not really declined so much because we don't have the certification but long term I think this is a good protection uh, for us and will secure markets over the long term um, so that's a quick rundown of that aspect of it in terms of corporate policy um, we talked about the whole communications function and some of the work that we've been doing there um, we have um, uh, some of our staff is currently in discussions and asking questions of other department heads in terms of uh, communications press releases media um, how that is done and to see if we can uh, broaden the scope of that a bit so our media relations has more impact um, over the long term and we can have that corporate voice um, uh, corporate messaging supported throughout the media and media campaigns um, we talked about um, uh, a lot of talk about um, the nuclear plant of course and uh, the um, the rebuild and expansion at the plant and, and there is a feeling by many people that we do have one of the largest facilities in North America if not the world but there's not apparent um, that there's a lot of spin-offs associated with that and so as part of the, um, the strategic plan and operational review we've been asked to expand um, our, our program um, out of just simply the tourism sector into both um, uh, into the nuclear sector as well and, and we're going to have those discussions further when next time we meet um, in terms of what that would mean and how it's integrated into the program currently with regard to agriculture we don't have much of a presence um, a number of years ago we ran an active uh, local food uh, marketing promotion product development campaign I would say it had limited traction um, and limited um, sustainable elements to it to the extent um, that we questioned whether it was worthwhile to continue funding so we have to do some more research in 2016 looking at what are the needs of the agricultural industry and is there a role for the County of Bruce within that to promote uh, that sector and if yes what is the role <coughs> what is the role how do we fund it and which partners do which within that broader agricultural system 
Um, the next section is dealing with land use um, planning, and you can see some of the KPIs that we've chosen. It breaks down the number of applicants. Sorry, see if there's any questions. Oh, yes, sorry. Is there any questions for Chris on economic development for starters? Okay, move on. Next section is land use planning, and um, I guess the most exciting news about the land use planning side is we've been able to um, uh, implement uh, over the last year the, the three hubs and putting in place all the administrative um, supervisory roles to make that happen. Um, in the 2016 um, uh, budget, there is funding there for uh, the last position to be funded, which is the planning technician in the, uh, the Lakeshore hub. In terms of the KPIs, uh, nothing jumps out at me a lot here in terms of the application numbers. They're roughly where we would expect them to be. Um, a number of professional written inquiries that, that continues to, to increase. Um, we do a lot of work uh, with landowners um, in terms of consultation. Um, and these are people who have um, applications and they represent fairly sophisticated development interests. But then there's this many people in the countryside who are interested in knowing what are the possibilities with regard to their property. Could they develop it for a certain use? And if not, is there other opportunities within the area in a different designation in terms of where they could go to develop land? And that represents a significant portion of our, of our time. Um, also, we do spend a lot of time consulting with local staff um, in terms of clerks, CAOs, building officials, and so on and so forth. And um, it, it's interesting to note that um, the contact with, with landowners and other people in the community in terms of percentage of our time um, is, is fairly high compared to actually writing a professional report for an, for an application. Um, so that's instructive. Uh, in terms of timing process legislatively, um, the, the numbers here are fairly low um, in terms of meeting that. And we think what's behind it is two things. Number one, we have a database that collects information on the applications and we enter the, um, the, um, the date of when we receive the application as opposed to when it's a complete application. And secondly, uh, we have a reduced fee schedule if you submit multiple applications. So somebody might have a plan amendment and a zoning and a consent application. We receive them, they're deemed as complete. Um, but the second two never meet the legislative timing process because of the, as particularly with regard to minor variances, because you go through the official plan amendment zoning and the severance last. Um, so it's, typically you could have a minor variance application with a consent application and one is hung up on the timing of the, uh, of the other one. So <coughs> we hope to, um, to update the actual tracking database hopefully in 2016, to add other elements that further refine the actual KPIs. Um, so in terms of the major initiatives, we mentioned the restructuring of, of the hubs. Um, we're looking at ways to realign our operations for efficiencies in terms of working with some of those agencies, such as the conservation authorities. Um, our work continues on the official plan review, uh, specifically with regard to looking at wetlands and hazard mapping in northern Bruce Peninsula, looking at uh, ways to develop that Bruce County lens as it applies to actual Planning Act applications in terms of policy interpretation, and a number of special projects um, that we're looking at assisting local municipalities with um, on items five to five to eight. Um, so I mentioned the hubs. Um, basically, uh, we're looking at um, uh, to fill that, that position, hopefully, um, in April. We're also in discussions with other staff <coughs> from our own division uh, in terms of corporate policy and economic development. Because that person um, in the, the planning application technician in the Lakeshore hub is really the face of the county that represents all things Bruce County. And so we've been in discussions with our other staff in terms of what are the uh, key uh, corporate, uh, what are the key um, types of behaviors we want this person to exhibit, what are some of those skills, and because we're going to rely upon that person to uh, provide messaging for other programs. Um, this is along the idea of a no wrong door approach, and if they come in, that person would be comfortable explaining to them about economic development opportunities, who the key contacts are in the community for some of these other programs so we're not creating a wall between land use, which can sometimes be seen to be regulatory, and economic development, which is sometimes to seen to be the opportunity side of, of development. Um, so that's ongoing and we look forward to making some progress with that in 2016. 
In terms of improving our efficiencies, we've been having internal discussions in terms of how we process applications, how we assign work in terms of routine administrative work um, to try to um, free up some of the time of our senior planners and planners to work on uh, community projects and we've had some good success uh, on that and we'll continue to have success in 2016. And we've had some discussions with the Conservation Authority in terms of streamlining um, the, um, the agreement process um, so that the work is done at the front end um, so there's less uncertainty once people get into the actual application process and we hope to complete some work on that in 2016. Lessons learned from that, of course, can be transferred um, to how we interact with other agencies um, in the land use planning field within the region. We mentioned the pilot project. It's turned out to be an interesting project um, because um, what we're really trying to do is create a common understanding with one of our municipalities around this whole idea of hazard mapping and wetlands and uh, what are the criteria under which they should be mapped. And um, so we have had our um, final steering committee meeting in northern Bruce, Bruce Peninsula just this week and uh, there is what I would call a fairly strong majority uh, report um, that'll be uh, there's a resolution that that be passed on to um, northern Bruce Peninsula Council and also County Council for consideration and then uh, that, now that we have the criteria we like to move into actually perfecting the maps um, in around this for uh, consideration uh, by County Council and northern Bruce Peninsula um, through their update of their comprehensive zoning bylaw and also part of the five-year review of the of the mapping for uh, the official plan. Um, we mentioned this whole, whole idea of the Bruce lens and again that's part of reviewing all our, our processes and procedures and KPIs in terms of um, how we incorporate provincial policies um, into our land use planning decisions and how we put the Bruce County lens onto that. I think the biggest challenge with regard to the official plan as we go through the review and I think we're on issue report number eight or nine now is really the importance of plain language that that plan is a fairly robust plan and if you get into the actual development policies um, th they're not too bad but there's repeating and repeating and repeating language everywhere in the plan to the extent that the document can be pared down significantly hit on the key points and the key objectives without being repetitive and try to make the language more understandable. Um, so those are our instructions for our staff in the review and then we hope to start providing some of that back um, to the committee in 2016. Um, this is just a listing of some of the projects that we're uh, helping out with at the local level. Um, some work in, here in Kinloss with their update. Um, in Concarden, um, doing a terms of reference for their five-year review. Um, and certainly we've, we've been very active in, in South Bruce Peninsula regarding um, looking at the need to review their plan and also um, a lot of neighborhood issues um, in the, the area what I call their industrial park um, with a major proponent of a residential development in that area. Uh, decisions uh, that need to be made regarding sewer and water allocations um, and development charges and, and the like. Um, so certainly very active file um, in the north. And then, then uh, the, the five-year review of the plan, which I've, I've mentioned um, there as well. In terms of 2017, um, one of the things we might want to look at in 2017 is this idea of natural heritage. Um, there is a requirement um, pretty much now that um, at the provincial level there's an expectation that we should have some type of a map in terms of what is natural heritage areas and features and so on and so forth. Um, there's a lot of mapping that's out there. Some of it is of limited quality and the Bruce County official plan has many written policies that says we should be looking at a natural heritage protection but without a lot of guidance. Um, so something we might want to look at in, um, in 2017. Thank you, Chris. Questions? Milt. Yeah. Your discussion with the Conservation Authority, uh, this upfront discussion you're having, what, what does that actually mean, Chris? Or how, how? Um, a number of years ago, this is going back, um, back when the plan was first adopted, we entered into a service agreement with the Conservation Authority that they provide um, review of applications because 
uh, the province had shut down many of the regional offices, so MNR was not looking at those broader provincial um, things and planning and not, not involved in the review process. So Bruce County was similar to many other jurisdictions. We thought we had the conservation authority. They can review applications and there'll be a fee charged back to the applicant and paid on it on that. When the agreement was originally done, it was, it was, a, it was a totally different time. And it was that somebody would submit an application, it would move forward, and then at some point in the formal process, there'd be all these issues. It could be with regard to roads or permits, um, natural heritage, wetlands, and so on and so forth. The process has totally changed is that there's an expectation for pre-consultation with that person, which we've always been strong on the pre-consultation, but now there's a, a statutory requirement for it. So everybody knows what to expect once you take the person's check and get into the process. The old agreement doesn't reflect uh, existing practices in around pre-consultation. Additionally, the only way for the, for the conservation authority to collect the fees is if there hasn't been an application submitted, but we need the information at the front end. Additionally, there's a number of responsibilities that are, that are shared or crossed over between jurisdictions. Um, for example, wetlands and wetland protection. There's policies in the plan, there's zoning bylaw requirements, but they're also um, regulated by the Conservation Authority under interference with, with wetlands regulation. So it's kind of all over the map. And then when we get into the application process, it just causes confusion for the applicant and for councils and for the planners and the like. So the purpose of the agreement, there's um, some basic principles that, we, we, that we've outlined um, with the agreement. And so it's really just an opportunity to sit down and talk about that and change um, the agreement along those, those principles. So the application fee then, what does that the application part of pre-consultation or no? Um, well, this is things that this still need to be discussed with, with them in terms of the fees and the fee structure. Mike. Oh, thank you, Mr. Orton. I, I am now another grandfather. I have a daughter. Oh, great. There we go. Granddaughter, sorry. Anyways, my, I go back to the key performance indicators, uh, Chris, and that's, and I, maybe, I, I think it kind of, it's uh, the one you have here, professional written inquiries and pre-consultations, and there's a number there, and I know the number's growing. But I'd be interested in what, from a perspective, of what are what are the inquiries about? I think it would tell us more about what's going on in our community and what what businesses or development proposals people are thinking about. And I and I'd be interested in seeing what's the uh, you know what's the content of those uh, inquiries and perhaps some of uh, some of the responses from the planning department. I think it would be interest. It'd be nice to know what's being said on our behalf to these applicants and. Uh, Yep. If you could summarize that in some way, I'd be quite interested in seeing that because numbers are fine, but it really doesn't mean anything to me. Yep. What's happening in the community? Certainly. Um, so when we do an inquiry letter, um, it's, um, it always gets CC'd to the clerk of the local municipality as well. So I don't know if, we, if you save those or they go in the property file or not, but those are available at the local level. Um, and um, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's pro probably a good idea in terms of, um, and it's something that needs to be further explored and integrated. We did, we're starting to develop um, the economic development side of it, right? And sometimes those letters are seen to be just the regulatory voice of it. So there's opportunities to start coordinating the land use message um, with the economic development message. Our letters, a lot of our inquiries are very much that it, it, this is, what you would need to do in order to develop this property in terms of whether there are studies required or the actual technically the, the process. Um, where we run into trouble sometimes with the public and local councils is, is they're asking us for a professional opinion. How, what are you going to recommend on this application when it gets to, gets to council? And so we, fe we feel obliged to give them a preliminary opinion on that. And in some cases that, that is seen to be a barrier. Um, so. Um, and we're always open to our uh, discussions with our local municipalities. In fact, it, it, it doesn't even have to be the planner's name who is, who is on it. If the technical, infor if you have an economic development person and you want us to provide the technical information to a person such as that as your advocate, wherever the case, we, we'd be willing to do that as well. But I would say it's probably always been the most controversial aspect of land use planning is the inquiry letters. Um, 
I have people say to me, I hear it at the arena, the planning board wouldn't approve it. I couldn't get it past the planning board. Well, we don't have a planning board. And it was probably a staff letter that said, um, everybody is free to submit an application, um, but if you're asking for a recommendation, this would be our recommendation on it. So, and some of them don't make it to council, but they all, they all go to your municipality. They're all CC'd to your municipality if we answer them. Yeah, I, I think it would be important because uh, we did that at the Conservation Authority. It really gives you a sense of what's in the community and what, you know, I mean, you're speaking on behalf of us as the approval authority when you send those letters out. And I think we, it would be, I, you know, I, I think it would be better if we understood what, what's being said on our behalf to, to all applicants. Yeah, no, we're not opposed to that at all. And it's something that we could look at in terms of the process to allow that for it to happen. Um, in the terms of breaking that down by the types of the inquiries and, and the like, yeah. Any other questions or comments for Chris? Yeah. Sure. I just want to, uh, to uh, explain to Chris that, that that is what he's doing with the conservation authorities now, that pre-consultation and, and that upfront information, that is, that is critical for developers because they're getting it first and rather than last, and they know exactly where they stand before they start. So I, 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 the sooner that one is completed, I think, the better. Robert? Uh, thank you, Mr. Orden. I kind of agree with Mike, since I sit on the Saugeen Valley Board, and it is really nice getting their reports when somebody goes before them wanting to know what they can do and can't do, and then they advise them. They send us an email to tell us who that individual is and what it's all about. It is really nice having that information up front because some of those people do come back to us complaining if it didn't go their way. When we have this information ahead of time, it is really helpful. So I agree with Mike, it would be a good idea to actually do what we're talking about doing. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for Chris? Okay, why don't we take a quick 10 minute break and then uh, reconvene.